Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Days Gone, the survival story-driven RPG game where you will have to sneak, drive, and shoot your way through enormous amounts of infected. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Days Gone is currently in full release and available on PC as well as some consoles. It is also worth mentioning that you can get this through the Epic Game Store if you want to support our channel for free. Just make sure to enter GA1 in the creator code box at checkout if you decide to do that. So what exactly is the game? Well, Days Gone is really more of an RPG game than it is anything else. The game has many great elements, but the one that stands out the most is undoubtedly its storytelling. Days Gone's campaign is rather strange, but also innovative when compared to the traditional main storyline and side quest formula that we have seen in so many other RPG games. Instead of having a single main storyline and several side quests that don't impact much along the way, it has mostly several different main storylines that all take place at the same time. In one storyline, you might even have a friend go missing just to find that they will save you later on in another. The telling of that story is also done in an impact way. You have everything from flashbacks that you play through to cutscenes that can take longer than some of the missions. The game also does a really good job of just setting up an atmosphere that is dark, gritty, and believable. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I would say that it even makes Gotham City seem like it's really not that bad of a place to live. Now one of the ideas that may have drawn you into the idea of even playing Days Gone is its amazing zombie hordes, and to be honest, we really shouldn't call them zombies since they're actually called Freakers. Freakers in the game are definitely a bit different from your traditional zombie stereotype. I won't spoil exactly why, but they're different enough to make the story and gameplay a bit more interesting. These Freaker horde battles are actually fairly rare within the main campaign since the game encourages you to usually try and avoid or run away from them. You see, the game would rather you focus on stealth to deal with many of your problems. In fact, there are several missions you will come across where getting caught will instantly end the mission and send you back to your previous checkpoint. However, this doesn't mean that you are usually going to be forced into stealth. Instead, it just means that almost every single situation has the option to be attempted in a stealthy manner. There is, of course, always the go in gun blazing strategy too, if that's more of your style. In order to get to any of these missions though, you will have to use your motorcycle. Your motorcycle in Days Gone is just as important, if not more important, than any of your other weapons, traps, or healing items. This is because Days Gone takes place in an absolutely massive world that would take much too long to traverse by foot. Therefore, your trusty motorcycle will help you get from one place to another much, much faster. You will have to be careful while riding though, as you can come across different road hazards. What we mean by road hazards are anything from a freaker leaping at you and knocking you off your bike, to a sniper shooting you off it from a far distance. The idea is that no matter where you're going, you're going to have to deal with things that make your drive a little bit more interesting. In order to make those drives easier though, you can upgrade your bike and fast travel. When it comes to just riding around town or from one destination to another, you will most likely want to upgrade your bike. This is because upgrades include things like a better engine to go faster, better tires for more grip, new chassis for more durability, bigger gas tanks for more fuel, and even the ability to carry extra ammo on the back of your bike. In other words, a dog may be man's best friend, but in this game, your motorcycle is going to be yours. To use your motorcycle to its fullest though, you will want to be fast traveling to save you tons of time on the road. In order to be able to fast travel though, you will need to complete side missions that involve you clearing out infected nests. Infected nests are shown as a big red zone on your map. In order to clear them, you will have to burn out the freaker nests. These are sort of like freaker houses that act as a place for freakers to sleep. All you need to do is toss a molotov on them and kill any freakers that emerge. Once that's completed a number of times within the zone, then it will have been cleared out and you can now fast travel through it. There are of course other side missions that are important to do, like clearing out bandit camps, which will sometimes have a new recipe for you to craft items. On the other hand, there are some totally meaningless ones that just give you a few credits or some increased reputation with the town, such as random events where you'll have to save someone from a bad situation. Lastly, it is important to note that there is quite a lot of crafting and gathering of various materials throughout the game. This means you'll be doing things such as searching the trunks of cars, 
buildings, and dead bodies for pieces of loot that can be used in order to make more items. You can craft something as simple as a Molotov, but you can also craft more advanced things like bombs, advanced melee weapons, and medicine. This plays an important role as going into any situation without a solid amount of the proper equipment could quickly result in you not being able to take care of business in a safe manner. So now let's move into the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that the whole motorcycle mechanics was a really interesting and cool idea. Everything from upgrading it to riding it around the world while trying to dodge ambushes always felt fun and enjoyable. I never even thought to say, ugh, I have to go all the way across the map because it was just always so much fun to drive there. Next up for the pros is the challenge modes. Challenge modes are nothing new to many games, but Days Gone has done something special with them. You see, while there may only be a handful of challenges for you to do, each time you complete a challenge, you will get a patch. Those patches will then give you passive benefits while playing the main storyline, so it makes them something you'll want to go out of your way to do, which is a good thing because all of them were really fun to take part in. After that is the game's progression. Progression in Days Gone is something that always felt meaningful, no matter how small it may have been. Every weapon, bike, or skill upgrade always felt impactful to your gameplay immediately, and therefore gave a great sense of accomplishment. And finally for the pros are the graphics. Days Gone has managed to deliver very well on a semi-realistic graphic art style. It's hard to put this into words, but all I can say is everything from cutting off heads, to driving through the forest, always felt immersive. Now for the cons. The first con I have for you today is just the fact that the game does still have a few minor bugs, and for a AAA title, this is pretty unacceptable to me. There's really nothing that's going to break your game or totally reset you back to a previous save, but there were plenty of times where I kinda said, uh, what? And then continued playing the game. And again, this isn't really anything too game-breaking, it's more so just an annoyance that I ran into. After that is the fact that the same dude seems to show up at every single random event. Yes, I did have in one situation where I think somebody else showed up, but for the most part, this same dude with a beard would need to be saved every single time from some random event that would happen, such as freakers attacking him, or maybe just some bandits trying to attack him along the road. It could be many different situations. Either way, it was just really frustrating to see that they were so lazy as to have the same exact character be the one you saved every single time, instead of just simply using a different model once in a while. And my last con today is just the fact that there wasn't a whole lot of content for this expensive of a title. If you watch our videos frequently, then you probably know that we want a minimum of $1 per hour of gameplay, and this game just barely hit that mark. It is really fun nonetheless, but I really wish that I would see more content or some kind of endgame for me to play, at least in a AAA title. So now it's time for the rating for the game. And when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every $1 that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular, in Days Gone, we would want to get roughly 50 hours of enjoyment out of the $50 that we spent. And after putting well over 24 played hours into this game, we give it... 9 out of 10 potatoes. Days Gone was one of the best RPG games we have played in a very long time. Normally in these style of RPG games, you get a pretty generic storyline, and the focus revolves more around upgrading your character, their equipment, and skills rather than anything else. Days Gone, on the other hand, has an incredibly innovative way of telling its story with multiple storylines all colliding into each other along the way. And just to make it even better, they don't sacrifice any quality when it comes to upgrading your character and the equipment that he uses. Sure, the game has its issues with bugs and a lack of content, but every hour we played the game felt incredibly enjoyable and like we couldn't wait for the next one. So with all that being said, we feel that Days Gone is without a doubt worth the cost. Before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more survival game content. I just want to shout out Jonathan S. and Jim Phillips. Thank you guys so much for being members. We couldn't do this without you. And also a shout out to all of our new subscribers here on screen. Now, don't forget to check out all of our links in the description below for things like our music library and Epic Games Creator Code, as these are just ways for you to help support the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching again, and we'll see you next time.